Now then, um, I thought I'd do another Armies on Parade video. Um, I just realised that one of my larger collections I've never um, never shown you guys. So um, the all set I've, I'm using them for now are Hail Caesar. Um, and what it is, is my 6mm Wars of Roses collection. Um, they're all Bacchus figures, um, painted a couple of years ago now. Um, I think I started them in about 2009 ish uh painted a load of them uh, and i was involved in the rather large talton project um i painted a lot of those as well and um, but I ended up with quite a sizable collection of my own um, but what i've done is i've played lots of different rule sets um ancient rule sets and i've kind of settled on hail caesar because i really like the the toolbox kind of approach to it um and you can do what you want, uh, as long as everyone's, you know, you can have a bit of fun with it and things like that, it's good. Um, so what I've done is I've created my own lists, um, and all I've used is the uh, the unit stats in the, in the book. So, um, you know, you've got heavy infantry, uh, medium infantry, and all that sort of stuff. And you've got all these different types of troops. Um, and I've tried to come up with something that I think represents the... Wars of Roses era, um, and then using the um, useful rules section as well, um, you can then further tweak them to make them how you kind of, or how I, sorry, um, think that they, they worked historically. Um, whether I've done it uh, justice or not, I don't know, but um, there's a summary there of all, all the different things that you can, that you can give different formations. Um, without further ado though, this is the list that I've come up with. Um, so you've got retinue, heavy infantry with bills and longbows. So all, all my units are kind of mixed, mixed units and then there's some special ones at the bottom there. Uh, and then, you know, the useful, special useful rules that I've given them. Um, I just came up with this and knocked it up. We've had a few games of it and it seems to work okay. So, um, and then on the back there you've got the summary useful rules. Um, but what we want to do really is see the, the miniatures themselves. So um, I'll stop waffling and I'll show you my collection. So these are all um, six mil backers figures, uh, as I said. Um, and the way I do them, um, the separate units is uh, for a standard size unit, um, I use six bases. So there's three bases of longbows and then three bases of retinue. I just call it retinue. I don't have separate retinue um, billmen and then separate men at arms. Um, the way I kind of see it, I, I think that they would have fought together. Um, they wouldn't have had these like separate little units um, all operating like uh, like Roman kind of centuries and, and cohorts that were well drilled and things like that. Um, so what I've kind of tried to do on the bases, I'll just show you one of the, the retinue bases, is um, the the fully armed men at arms are kind of clustered around the standard and then all, all the rear ranks and stuff are filled with the, the retinue billmen and they all fight together. Where's that? Let's see if Philip Wentworth. Um, yeah, so that's what all the retinue bases kind of look like. Uh, if I expand it further, if I do like the um, one of the kings or something like that, I might give, I might have a full base of just um, armoured men at arms. Um, but for the vast majority of the armies, I think they would have been kind of mixed up. Um, yeah, so anyway, a standard unit, six bases, um, retinue longbowmen, retinue billmen at the back, um, and then depending um, what stage of the battle you are, um, have it so they can. Uh, move through each other freely. Um, so if the enemy is getting close, then the longbowmen will move behind the billmen or the, the retinue troops. Um, the way I've done it is each each unit is made up of three uh, retinues of troops, um, and you just block them together into one one block. And I try and get the, one of the senior nobles to be the command base in the centre, uh, and that's kind of the way I've done it. Um, yeah, so as you can see, there's loads. 
and this is both my armies together so um, they're all kind of mixed up and um, yeah so a bit of baggage there as well these are all backers figures as well so you've got the, the little carts and things like that um, got small units a small unit is two bases wide so let's move my camera forward to apologize about the camera over there so the small units are two bases wide so for example these um mounted men at arms and knights um are two bases put together uh, and that's classed as a small unit in the game but what you could do is just depending on the scenario you, you want to play you could put three units together like that and that would just be a normal standard size unit um if you wanted it to be uh, and then the tiny units are things like um, the handgun is there, it's just one base, it's a tiny unit. And then the, the sort of medium cavalry or light cavalry, sorry, the hobblers or, or um, border kind of troops, just one base strong. Um, cavalry didn't play a major part in the Wars of the Roses anyway. It was uh, mostly infantry. So, yeah, as you can see, there's absolutely tons of them. It took me quite a long time to paint them. I think there's about I think on each base is between kind of 24, 36 figures per base. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot there. Um, commanders on, on these little 30 mil squares. Uh, what is this? The Duke of Exeter. There he is there, on his white horse. Um, so yeah, so each army's got three commanders. Um, in fact, the Lancastrians have got um, King Henry the uh, Sixth. There, it's just a tent with a couple of um, servants and stuff stood around outside. Uh, he's been hidden away in his tent. Um, I have actually got camps as well, but I left them at home unfortunately, so I can't show you those. Uh, yeah, so that is pretty much my Wars of the Roses collection. Yeah. I don't realise how many there are when they're all packed away in the box and some of them I get them out I think blimey I've painted quite a few of these over the years I'll just quickly try and uh, show you them a bit closer they are quite difficult to show you because they're, they're so small um, but yeah you can kind of see the mass effect that you can get with 6mm um, yeah there you go um, the units of spearmen there as well there's the units of spearmen Again, with the, these are all levy troops. Um, so the levy guys have painted them. They're not all completely uniform. There's a bit of brown and different shades of uh, different colours in there. Uh, same with the spears. These are levies at the back. Um, some artillery there at the back. Um, more knights. Um, more levies there. More retinue troops. And each one of these um, retinue bases have actually put the label of who it is on the back. Yeah, you can see that. Very small. I can't even read it myself. It's uh, Lord Hungerford there. Um, yeah, I really did enjoy painting these. Oh, I need to show you this as well. This is the um, from Bacchus. It's the world's smallest war game. Got a couple of war gamers there on the base. The artillery having a game with a little table there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, really small, tiny figures. But um, yeah, like I said, I really enjoy painting these. Um, I might even add to it. I don't think I need to though. My wife says uh, I, I don't need to, so I best behave. Yeah, so there is all my Wars of the Roses stuff. Thanks very much for watching, um, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye bye.